anti-corruption has been a big issue in developing countries. And for the last decade and more, we have spent a lot of resources in fighting corruption. My argument is that we have not achieved very significant results with this. There have been some improvements in some countries for some time, but often they have been reversed. And the argument that I have is that the reason for this is that we have forgotten about some of the structural features of corruption in poor countries and focused on individual incentives. And we've tried to make it more costly for individual public servants to engage in corruption by raising their salaries and so, and so that therefore increasing the cost of being fired by having better punishments and more severe punishments and more rule of law and reducing discretion. But this has ignored the fact that corruption has some structural aspects to it. For one thing, developing countries have very informal organization of their societies, including their politics. And this is partly because the formalization of institutions into rules which are enforced by the state takes a lot of time and is very costly. So a lot of the organization of society, both in the productive sector and in politics, is informal, that is not rule-based, which are enforced by the state. This has very severe consequences for anti-corruption strategies. The other thing is that politics in developing countries is largely based on um, informal uh, coalition building, and this has to do with the fact that the fiscal um, resources of developing countries are limited, or the fiscal resources come from natural resources like oil, which it is very easy for one or two groups to control. In advanced countries, there are huge fiscal resources, and they come from a very broad section of the population which is productive and paying taxes. And this makes politics rule following, because the people who are paying taxes don't want rules to be broken because they have property rights, they have rule following organizations, and breaking the rules hurts their profitability, their incomes. So the taxpayers insist on rule following politics, and the rule following politics distributes typically 30 to 40 to 50 percent of GDP. And that is why politics is rule following in advanced countries. In developing countries, the coalitions on which politics is, is based, on which you form ruling coalitions, are often based on informal off-budget allocations of resources because there isn't enough in the budget to, to do this. And when the budget is big because of natural resources, it can be used by those who have power in informal ways without any checks and balances from the rest of society. Now, this is a structural problem, and we can't solve it quickly. That means that if you change the incentives of an individual public servant, it doesn't often have much effect, because the individual public servant is operating in a system which is largely informal, where the politicians have different objectives, and so the individual bureaucrat or the individual local politician has pressures on them coming from a system which they can't change. Similarly, you can't actually change, in the short run, the institutionalization, because that takes a long time to have the formal um, institutions built. That means that we have to focus our anti-corruption strategies, taking into account the structural nature of corruption, and target those bits of the corrupt processes which have the worst developmental outcomes. And this is very important both in the sense of having achievable results, but also in the sense of not getting demoralized by taking on a problem that you can't solve. So my approach is to focus on particular processes, like, for example, how do you build a power plant, how do you make a road, and then target the processes and institutions which are associated with that to make the developmental outcome better, to actually make the road which stays after the next rains, or to make the power station, and so on. And this means that you will be targeting, effectively, the bits of the corruption which really matter. And as the economy develops, and as you become more successful in doing this, and this is the experience of all successful developing countries, is that they have made incremental improvements, pragmatic, outcome-oriented, and the development of the economy that is unleashed then creates the, the, the basis for a genuine, across-the-board, anti-corruption strategy, which is gradual and happens over time.